Hey, hey, and welcome to another Tech Tuesday. This is Chad from Ascension Worship. This week, I'm going to show you how to set up a mastering style limiter on your broadcast mix on an X32. That's a lot of stuff to say. So I'm going to try to make this video really quick. Um, if you've seen my previous video on uh, broadcast um, mixes, uh, I'll put a link at the end of this video. But we've got a post-fade mix that's going out to our broadcast. Um, I have uh, This is for a church that has an older crowd, um, but their musicians are kind of playing uh, kind of more modern style. Um, so we've got everything turned down a fair bit to be the right volume for their room. Uh, however, that means that I've got very conservative levels going out um, because they have a really nice sound system. So if I were to just play the broadcast mix as is, it would sound like this. So if you look up on the screen, you can see my meters. So this is at a rehearsal. They get a little bit louder and a little bit here, um, but we're kind of peaking out when everything gets to their loudest at around negative 12, negative 10, somewhere in there. Um, and usually when vocals are going, they're hitting around negative 18. I don't want to get dinged for any kind of copyright stuff, so I'm keeping the vocals out today. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to play it back in a moment here. We are looking at our broadcast mix, which is on buses 13 and 14. Um, now, first off, very important, I've got those set exactly at 0, 0.0. In this video, we're going USB out of the console into a computer running OBS, and that's how we're recording everything. Um, so the way to check that you have that exactly right uh, is to go to your view button for your master uh, bus and make sure that is set to 0, 0.0 exactly, um, just to be safe and be a little bit OCD. We're gonna put some, uh, some safety measures in there as well, but let's start with that. Okay, so the trick to making this work is we're gonna be using a mastering style broadcast limiter um, called the Precision Limiter that's built into the X32 uh, for free. Uh, so to kind of give you an idea of what a limiter does versus a compressor, with a compressor, you've got your softer sound, your louder sound, and the compressor squeezes the louder sound down, and then you have something called makeup gain where you can kind of push it up some. But with a compressor, there's a little bit of give. So like if a sound is really loud, it will become quieter because of the compressor, but it still has some room to go up above the ceiling. Whereas with a limiter, we have what's called a brick wall limiter because it's like a, a brick ceiling that you cannot break through. And so you set your ceiling height and then you push all your audio up into that ceiling to be able to get more volume. And at some point, you're going to actually start to squish down your waveform a little bit if you go um, pretty extreme with it, as we'll see in this video. So what we're going to do is first off, we've got compression off on this channel. Uh, so there is no compression happening. We're just going to be using the limiter. And uh, we're going to go to effects, effects home. And you can see in here, I've got some different effects are being used right now. While this last one uh, isn't being used at all, this is a dual graphic EQ uh, and there's nothing set to it. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go to our insert point and change this to bus 13 and bus 14. So we've got bus 13, select. Bus 14, select. And then very important, make sure you push the in, uh, insert button. Now these two are linked, hopefully yours are as well. So you notice when I hit insert on one, I did it on both. Uh, and now we're gonna hit edit. And so we're looking at this, to change it from a dual graphic EQ, we're gonna hit utility. We've got a list of different uh, possible plugins on the sides. Uh, if you scroll up to your dynamics, you'll find the precision limiter. So select that. Okay, so again, we have two main things that we're gonna look at today. Uh, our output gain, which is our ceiling, and then our input gain, which is just our overall volume boost that we'll be working with. Uh, what we want to do is we want to start with our output gain, and the way that this works in the digital world is uh, there are times, if you're doing this really heavily, that little bits of your sound can squeeze past this limiter. Um, and so what we want to do is we want to create a little bit of cushion just to be safe. Um, so as a default, you can see it's already set at negative 0.5. I'm going to just go one further on that. I'm going to drop it down to negative 1, 
Uh, and so even if a what's called an intersample peak squeezes by the limiter, uh, it has to be really loud to be able to get that extra dB uh, coming through there. So this is going to just be a good little protection for us. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to play that audio back through again. I'm going to then crank up my input gain, and I'm watching two things. I'm watching my gain reduction meter over here, and we want to get to where it's just starting to, to light up a little bit, showing us that it's working. It's now uh, increased our gain to the point to where there's no more headroom left, and now some of our louder things, like our kick and our snare, are going to start to be kind of rolled off just a little bit so that our quieter things, like our vocals and acoustic and all that kind of stuff, can kind of come up a little bit more. Now, you don't want to overdo this. Uh, the other thing that we're looking at is our level over here on the side. Um, now, if you're, I've got this set to where it's coming out my main mix, so I'm seeing that over here. Uh, another way you could do this, if, if you hit solo, uh, you'll be able to see it um, on your MC solo mix, or you, know, this, you can look at it on OBS, whatever it's gonna be. Um, but we want to get to where it's going to look a little scary for some of you because it's going to be hitting just below the very top. So it's going to be um, just below the red when you're looking on your X32. And on OBS, it'll actually show it's being in the red. That's just a warning, basically. As long as you're not hitting above zero, uh, you're going to be fine. And what we want to do is we want to have to where our kick and snare when they're going are, are pretty regularly hitting, um, again, just below peak. And then we're going to kind of bring our levels up um, underneath that. So enough talking. Here we go. All right, so you'll notice that I was starting to hit about 3 dB of uh, compression going on there, or, or limiting actually. Uh, and then I was getting to where like my biggest snare hits were pretty regularly hitting uh, at the max. Um, now, if you do this too much, you'll start to notice you'll get what's called like a pumping sound. Um, and so depending on how aggressive you want your sound to be, so this is a full band with the drums going, so they actually want it pretty loud on their stream. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to adjust this release time. It defaults at 662 uh, milliseconds, uh, which is pretty smooth sounding. But if you want to get a little bit more volume, a little bit more of an aggressive uh, sound, you can try turning that down. So I'm going to crank that down for you, let you hear the difference. Um, so here we go. And let's say, uh, one more thing for this video, let's say that maybe um, you have your levels really conservative. Um, and so you, you can see right now, I've got this cranked up pretty high. It maxes out at 18 dB, and I'm just a dB and a half below that. I'm at 16.5 right now. Um, and let's say that you've got yours cranked up all the way and you're still not getting enough volume to get it out over your feed the way you want. Uh, I'm gonna turn this back down for right now. All right, and what we're gonna do is, we talked about our compressor earlier. Um, so I'm going to make sure that this uh, limiter is set up after the compressor. I'm not gonna actually be compressing, but I'm gonna use the makeup gain as another digital boost before we hit this, this limiter. Um, so to do that, I'm gonna go over to, I've, I've selected my broadcast mix, click home, go over to the config tab, and then you can see where it says in position. Uh, this is for our insert, so sorry, in position, insert position. It's set to pre, meaning it's before our compressor. If I turn this knob, it's now after the compressor. And then, um, so what I'm gonna do is then go over to my dynamics page, my compression. Make sure that your compressor is off, um, meaning that the threshold is all the way up, the ratio is all the way down, and then you can turn on active. And this should have no effect on your sound. 
what we're going to do now is we're going to take this gain control, which is a makeup gain, and we're just going to boost it up, in this case, 6 dB. Okay, and um, so now we are adding some level before we get to our limiter, and so we shouldn't have to push the limiter as hard. Now, it doesn't really change anything sonically. It just means that without redoing your entire gain structure of your board, this is a way you can get a little bit more push into your limiter. Um, but I would suggest you look at your gain structure. I've got tons of videos on that, and I will happily answer any YouTube questions uh, that you have on that. Um, so again, let's go back to our effects. Uh, and so remember before we had to go to 16.5 to get that level. Um, so let's see what we can do now. So I'm slamming that limiter pretty well, and I've only gone up to 11 dB, but really it's like 17 dB, because remember we have that 6 dB from the compressor, it's makeup gain. Um, so that's how you set that up. Um, a couple of things. One, a broadcast limiter like this is kind of like a nuclear bomb. Uh, just because you have one doesn't mean you should drop it on somebody. Uh, so... You should definitely use this. It's definitely a great tool for getting more volume on your stream and making sure that you don't digitally clip. There's definitely some points where you need to be reserved on this. Um, so one thing that I've been playing around with and I actually messed around with in that video, as I crank this up, because everything is becoming squished together, I'm hearing things that I wasn't hearing before, like the snare was pretty bright. So I turned down some of the, the brightness on the EQ for the snare. It doesn't really make a huge effect on the live sound, um, but on the stream, because everything's so compressed with that example I just did, it becomes a little bit more obvious. Things like that. Um, you'll find that things like your low end from your kick drum uh, or your bass guitar will start to distort at some point. And again, even though you're not hitting digital distortion technically, um, you can't abuse this too much or you will start to get distortion on your stream um, within certain low-end instruments. So just be careful of it. You might notice that you may need to adjust certain things uh, either tonally or volume-wise going into your broadcast mix because this will just bring out some things that you may not notice in your live room. Uh, so I hope this has been helpful for you guys. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I have another video that is basically the back end of this where I'm explaining how everything's set up in post-fade uh, going to here. So this is a copy of what the actual crowd would be hearing, but the crowd would be hearing it without all that limiting going on. Um, so definitely check that out. There will be a link to that at the end of the video. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in our comment section below. And as always, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and to share. Uh, this is a free resource for the local church. I want to make sure that we can get it out to as many people as possible, especially while a lot of you guys maybe can't do live services for everybody now. We want to try and make this as good as possible for our folks that are stuck, uh, stuck at home. Uh, so I hope this has been helpful for you guys. Until next time. Have a great week.